I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money, two seconds later it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. I'll be on to race number eight, closing everything off 1800 meters. Phillies and mares, 68 handicap. It's an E division class at the time of recording. Number two, Chelsea Flowers is scratching, bringing the field down to 10 runners. Uh, this race, three runners, pick six, three runners, jackpot two, three runners, the last pick three. The obvious three, I think, that many will be playing their bets around unless they think these three horses won't be good enough to win. Uh, those will be number three, Shell Seeker, four, Miss Layla, and 11, Belja. I'm going to touch on Belja first, trading at around four to one. Uh, by the way, Shell Seeker is at two to one and seven to two, number four, Miss Layla. I'm going to go with the biggest of those three runners on top of the boards, Belja. And uh, Rachel will claim the one and a half. She, she knows the smear very well. Uh, a three-time winner, has won on the poly. Now, <clears throat> that last start, if you see the progress that she was making through the field behind Bay Breeze and her previous runs, then you will know that from this poor draw with 10 runners going to post, I don't think you want to waste this horse up to try and, uh, you know, get lucky from that draw. Best way is to take that medicine early be confident in the horse that she will give you that turn of foot over the final 400 meters. And that could be good enough to try and beat those in front of her. I personally think between herself and Layla, uh, Miss Layla that is, they yes. both have the, the similar type of running style off the pace. Yes, um, touching on number four, Miss Layla, <clears throat> this is a horse that I've also been following for a while, Dees. And, you know, she's always lagging at the back of the field and then just finds a big finish and it's always too late. And unlucky. Always unlucky. So this is over 1,800. Well, you touched on the top three selections. I'm in agreement with you. <clears throat> I like number three, um, Shell Seeker, that's trading at around about 18 to 10. That's obviously anti-post early. The betting varies with the different fixed odds betting platforms. The last one was very good behind feeling groovy. And if she I'm not mistaken... Yeah. She was punted that day to her. Yes. Uh, I remember Mark Dixon had a winner earlier on the day. If I'm not mistaken, I stand to be corrected. But I did interview him and uh, they liked the source, Shell yes. Seeker. You know? and, and, and Jamelo liked it as well. I yes. was working in Gallup. I can remember that. Yes, yes. So uh, maybe a little bit disappointing because that, I that expected the was given. Aston, Aston gave that a top right. <laughs> Yeah, absolute pearl of a ride from Aston Aries on that day. But healthy respect again. She's got to go into the play again. And uh, number four, Miss Liala. One of these days she's going to get it right. Uh, she will be running on very strongly. Hopefully Sereno can time it right. And then you touched on number 11, Bell Jar. I want to touch on another runner. <coughs> excuse me. That's trading at around about 10 to 1. Tell me Mel's Princess. It's not Mel's Princess. Tell me Roy's Rocker. It's not Roy's Rocker. Oh, then I give up. It's number eight Q for you. Oh, I saw the page. I saw it's the back page. Yep. And I got it all wrong on that back yep. page of yours. Now, if you look at the form, Ds, it does not jump out at you. This horse is drawn eight, which is a little bit wide. Yes. It's trading at around about 10 to 1. Mm. Look at the last two starts. Um, if you look at the start on the 14th of November, that finished 10th, 4.5 lengths behind Master's Beauty. One pace throughout. One pace throughout. The last run, 7th, 5.45 lengths behind Boogie Shoes. How is that horse now, running, Boogie Shoes? Yeah, extremely well. Mm. And this horse lost 5 lengths in the last time. I saw that. So, the last four runs had absolutely, last three runs rather, had absolutely no luck at all. There is valid excuses there. And prior to that, the form was generally good. Now, what interests me as well is the handicapper is holding this horse's rating. Mm. You know, finishing 10th, finishing 7th, should have taken a bit of a drop, but hasn't. So the handicapper believes that this horse is holding the rating there, 58. If things map out for this horse, could be a runner. 
things need to go well here. So what are you telling me now? You're telling me that I must include the stable companion. Include the stable companion queue for you as well as number 11. So possibly we go four You're Costing horses. me money here, Devon. We go You're four costing, I was three horses. I was happy with the perm <laughs> thus far. Now you may me add a bit of cash. Hopefully it is worthwhile. And it's not a Raskova. Yeah. But well done to the connections. You know? Yes, no, fantastic. I mean, well done to the connections. Oh, that was the horse that created that 644,000 payout. Nothing mm. else. Nothing else. Well, may, some may say Captain's Ransom as well. But yeah, that is it. Number eight Q for you. Devon is giving me a slight headache on this uh, <laughs> recording of the show after tipping Q for you because I thought we we're going to be all in with the stable companion. But he's right because Robert Carty is the man that does all the work for the Andre Nell Platinum team here in KZN. He knows the horse as well. And he rides number eight Q for you. A race of tactics where you can see Shell Seeker, who's trying the distance for the first time. It may be on advice from Keegan DeMello uh, that he uh, mentioned to Mark Dixon. You can go a bit further if you want now because she seemed to just be one pace. I couldn't get past that horse feeling groovy last time out. Even if you go 1,800 meters, shouldn't be a problem. So I can see Shell Seeker in front. Miss Leila Belja at the back of the field. If Devon Govender's horse jumps on terms and doesn't lose ground, wouldn't be behind those two runners. Should be a bit more handy. And what's going to happen at the business end? Could we see a horse staying on from the front to in it like Shell Seeker? Or is it going to be these runners coming from off the speed? I think that is a wrap of race number eight. And always an absolute pleasure working alongside Devon Gover. How, how's Mauritius going? I haven't, I haven't been falling much. How's yeah, no, everything's going well thus far. I, have, I think the program is not out as yet, but yes. uh, the word out is that they're probably going to start racing at the end of March. Yes, but so. you, you had some challenges. I mean, a couple of meetings you were calling, in, the colours were black and white, I had. Yeah, it was a bit difficult <laughs> here and there, you know. Sometimes uh, there is a few colour changes, but we yes. try to keep ourselves up to scratch and up to date with everything. <laughs> it can be a bit of a challenge. But I mean, that is your job, it's, to it's remember colours now, yeah. it's black and white. Yeah, it's a good learning curve, though. It's a good learning curve, I can tell you that. So, no, I mean, that yeah. is... Uh, Sometimes we skate on thin ice, but we are live. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there's a lot of challenge. I mean, it's, you're calling off a monitor, number one. You're calling in a, a foreign uh, country, number two. And sometimes you have technical issues, uh, which is out of uh, the hands. And these guys do their best uh, calling from the studio. That's our very own Devon Governor. Always a pleasure. Thanks to the entire team at Gallup TV, Devon Governor, and from myself, Dees Dynan. Until we meet again, hopefully things go according to plan. And uh, we make a few birdies and maybe even an eagle at Hollywood Bets Gravel on Monday. Until we meet again, you take care. Salani Gashle. Uh, my name is Danny Diliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, s we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change.